Forget bandages, researchers have developed a stretchy, goopy hydrogel, which could be the next Band-Aid. The material we have developed is like a smart skin. It is stretchable, self-healing, and has haptic feedback, meaning it can actually feel. Researchers say the hydrogel could do much more than a simple adhesive bandage. It's biodegradable, so doctors could implant it into a patient to release drugs to promote healing. It's one of several advancements in wound medicine, much of it with roots in 3D printing. So it, it, it runs a whole gamut of uh, being uh, to, uh, sort of simple to very complex. John Jackson is one of hundreds of researchers with Wake Forest's Institute for Regenerative Medicine. They're 3D printing entire body parts from live cells that can be sewn into the human body. It's called bioprinting. In Toronto, researchers have developed a handheld 3D skin printer. It can place layer after layer of skin tissue to heal deep wounds. The entire process takes just two minutes. And the armed forces are interested in the promise of quick healing battlefield wounds. U.S. Army researchers are developing an engineered skin substitute. It's grown from a patient's own cells to treat tissue injuries like burns. The Army says burns account for as much as 30% of battlefield casualties. Wake Forest is also part of a group of schools and hospitals that works with the military. They've developed a scanner that analyzes a deep wound or burn and then prints skin cells on the area. We could uh, get almost 80 85% coverage of epithelial cells within about two weeks after we treat it. It normally takes six to eight weeks for a wound that size to heal. The private sector is getting in on the action too. It's projected the global 3D printing medical devices market will be a $1.88 billion industry by 2022. a long way off from anything of Westworld proportions. Widespread bioprinting is at least a few years off. As of 2016, only 99 of more than 5,000 registered hospitals in the U.S. had a medical 3D printing facility. Hydrogels are still a ways out too. So far, they've only been tested on animals and are awaiting larger preclinical tests. Jackson says though, conservatively, he gives it five years.